Thank you and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for September 12th. Uh, first thing on the agenda is public comment. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak? Just state your name and your address so that we can know. Uh, my name is John King. I'm the president of the Seton One Condo Association on Ocean Boulevard, 939 Ocean Boulevard. And my primary reason for being here is I was wanted to ask permission to use a couple of parking spaces in the main lot because we're renovating the property and the contractors have a you know fairly large trailer which they store all their equipment and we need to put it somewhere and we have very little space while they're renovating the front building facing the beach and that would be like the last three spaces you know next to Cusack Road okay well Again, we don't. This is only public comment time. I noticed your letter, and I'm sure we'll bring that up on a new business. Okay. So later on. So that's that's the best we can do. But uh, uh, if you want to hang around for that, but I think uh, that that'll just come up on a new business, and we'll we'll see if we can do that for you. Okay. All right. Do I, I need to stay for the the whole meeting? You don't meeting, need to or? stay, no, sir. Okay. No. Um, so I'm glad you came and spoke. Could I also um, put a Cross one more idea for the board's consideration. Sure, it's your three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it mean the right venue for this, but our un our, our complex and St. Magnus next door, we have only enough parking spaces for the residents that live there. You know, I have adult children, I have grandchildren, and lots of times they like to come up and you know go to the beach and sleep over, and it's very difficult for them to do so because we have no place to put their car. And I was wondering. If it would be possible to add a few more overnight parking spaces in that front lot in front of our building. There's only a handful of them there now, and people fight over them. It's just crazy. You know? Yeah, they do. Well, we can, we can take a look at it. And, and, uh, but, again. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay? I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Anybody else for public comment? Seeing none, announcements in community calendar. Um, yeah, actually, I just wanted to say that I talked to Ben Moore this morning, and uh, I guess they had the most successful pig roast ever, he was telling me. And I want to congratulate them and say thank you to everyone that helped and assisted with that. And I also just want to say that we made it through another seafood festival, thank to the Chamber of Commerce. And I wanted to appreci say appreciation to all our departments and the heads for keeping it a safe weekend, especially this year. Yeah, I'd like to congratulate the American Legion Post for their 9-11 event yesterday. It was it was extremely uh, well done and a very, very moving event. So congratulations to them. Phil? Uh, there's a, a young gentleman uh, on Academy Ave named Merrill, his first name Russ. I saw signs. I think it said he was 50 years old. Uh, something like that. Something Maybe like 40 that. more years than so that. I would like to uh, wish Mr. Uh, Merrill, the youngster, a, a very happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Rick? Yeah, as one of the, um, you know, along Rusty and I are both uh, on the board at the museum, it really went very, very well. And uh, it was very interesting. There were a lot of the local politicians there. And it's um, weird that really there were like three main prizes. The politicians that were there won two of them, <laughs> <laughs> including. Um, one of them won the big jackpot and donated it to the museum, which oh, nice. was very nice. Good. And it was also very nice at the Seafood Festival. I went there on Friday night, and we greeted the governor. She was uh, very attentive to the crowd, and it was very um, moving to see her with, especially there were a lot of uh, kids there that are with their parents, like the parents are in their 80, and they're special uh, kids, and she was so nice to them. It was really amazing. It was very good to see the uh, the seafood festival went off this weekend without a, he a hitch. Uh, we had one little hiccup of a little bit of rain on on Sunday, but I don't think that bothered anybody at all. Um, it was an excellent event. All the departments, as Regina said, did an excellent job. You know, we had the um, uh, we had the 9/11 uh, 
Memorial at the uh, Legion. Also, uh, Desi at the 401 did a wonderful Oktoberfest type of event where it was a fundraiser for the American Legion, and uh, I swung by there, and it was it was fairly well attended. And the uh, again, the Historical Society did so. If if you wanted something to do this weekend, there was plenty to do in this town. So. Okay, consent agenda. We have one, a Hampton Cemetery deed. Two, Unitil petition for underground gas lines. Three, a banner sign license. Conservation Commission alternate appointment, Anthony Caro. Caro? Caro, I think. Caro. And an outside entertainment license for the old salt for 10, 12, uh, 22, 16. Motion to move the consent agenda. Second. 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 All those in favor? Unanimous. The appointments. The first appointment we have is Ed Tinker. Good evening. Here this yeah. evening to, I did present you with the 2016 MS1 reports. There's three reports. One is the overall town uh, value. Um, Actually, what we do is we determine the taxable value for the for the year to set the rate. Um, just to let you know, we did complete, of course, the revaluation this year. Um, so the total valuation you'll see on the MS1 is three billion five hundred and fifty-four. I'm sorry, three billion three hundred and one million eight hundred and seventy-seven thousand five hundred dollars. That's the taxable value. That's an increase of just over eighteen percent from last year's. Um, kind of, uh, you know, uh, again going along with with our equalization ratio the the, the um, over the past five years the decrease or the increase in sale prices as to assessments um, additionally uh, I gave you two other MS ones ones for the the precinct the main precinct and the other is for both the precinct and the partial precinct values um, I can't answer any questions you have uh, as to those if you have any questions do you need any other information? Gina? Um, well, on the 18.3 percent that it's gone up, no, I know we had the revaluation this year. Correct. But I think, could you maybe just explain how, since we haven't had a revaluation since 2011, that 18 percent is not really just to explain. Well, it's not a one-year increase. Right, it's not just like right. a yes. increase for the one year. What we actually do is look, it actually relates to uh, the past two years, 2014, we analyzed the sales from April 1, 2014 through April 1, 2016. Um, I can give you a history of the five-year market. Um, in 12 and 13, the market relatively stayed the same. Our, our equalization ratio, which, which guides or indicates the assessment to sale relationship, um, fluctuated uh, between 96 and 98 percent from 2011 through 2013. 2014, the, the ratio dropped to 90.9 percent. So the market began to, to increase at a considerable rate as in relation to those prior three years. And then again in 2015, the ratio went down to 89.4 uh, percent. Um, I actually, as part of the reval, for a little information, we we looked at the sales through July of this year, utilizing the 2011. CAMA system, but that data that was developed then, and if we continued at the at using that same system, our equalization ratio would have been down at, as of this July to 83 percent. So it really goes hand in hand with the 17, 18 uh, percent uh, increase that we saw as a an average throughout the town uh, for 2016. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, Ed, we also had a, uh, I mean, the homeowners, their property values went up, assessments, and the utilities went up. But next year, we're going to have a problem with utilities, aren't we, with, with the, the bill that the house paid, 1198 on evaluating the uh, telephone poles? Right, that bill will take effect next April 1st. Um, what it'll do is allow the, the state will then be allowed, will continue, will begin to value the telephone poles owned by the telecommunication companies or Fairpoint for, for Hampton. Um, and they will, we will submit, well, actually the company will submit their data. The state will be setting the value of the poles and the conduit. 
and then submitting the value to us. So we'll have to utilize those values, which could be substantially lower than what we're currently using. So it, that's what it's indicating. That it'll have an effect. It will have an effect, yeah. And that's something that Hampton and, and a few other towns went up and fought pretty vigorously against up at the State House. And yes. We're not very successful, but we did fight a fight to try and get it changed. We did. Phil? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Tinker, uh, you've had a busy year, and uh, you've uh, led magnificently, and we appreciate it. Uh, this uh, document, uh, mandated by statute, Right. Uh, the MS1 uh, right. tells, tells a, a scintillating and remarkable story about the town of Hampton. It's epitomized by both uh, uh, the people that are here tonight and their commitment to public uh, service. It's uh, uh, an endorsement of the efforts of the, uh, the people that own property, that live here, that work here, that conduct commerce here. Uh, if the average price in this town, uh, uh, in this town of a home is $300,000, and your valuation, which closely uh, mirrors sales price, is that correct? Correct. Um, you just added uh, close to $60,000 to your balance sheet. Uh, there are many communities in this country that cannot say the same. There's many communities in this state that cannot say, say that same thing. Uh, and this doesn't happen by accident. It happens because of the extraordinary caliber of the people that live and work in this town and conduct commerce in this town. And so I would remind uh, folks that while we are uh, definitely committed to uh, keeping the operating costs of this town and uh, identifying, identifying infrastructure challenge uh, and keeping those costs and uh, those responses uh, with taxpayer dollar to a minimum, uh, the very fact that you own property in this town is a, uh, a remarkable story that uh, will uh, eclipse uh, without state and federal aid, Wall Street is in jail, uh, economic success. There's no bailout for Hampton uh, residents in any sort. There's no bailout that contributes to this. This is all self-made, self-propelled money. And this this is uh, an, an extraordinary report. Um, and I'm very pleased that you are presented to us here tonight uh, on behalf of the people of Hampton. Uh, exempt properties, do you have a list of exempt properties? I do have a list. You do. I, I, uh, I would be interested, I don't know if the board is, but I would be uh, interested in a detailed list of the uh, exempt properties that are in the town of Hampton. Oh, yeah, I can, I can run that. I don't, just take a minute to yeah, run that I would, I would, Yeah, I would love to peruse that. Uh, if the chairman has a different use or uh, um, preference for uh, uh, disbursement of that information, that is fine. Uh, Jim made a good comment about um, utilities. Uh, we've got Section A, the list of uh, uh, electric companies. Um, and uh, Next Tower, of course, isn't listed uh, there. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, we're, we will be uh, maintaining uh, the highest effort on behalf of the taxpayer to make sure that um, that is on the list and uh, there's a more equitable uh, distribution of their customers' money back to uh, the town of Hampton. That's our story, and we are sticking to it. Uh, I'd be interested as a percentage of uh, exemptions or givebacks, if you will, that Jim uh, uh, alluded to, and how much more utilities are getting exemptions than the average uh, taxpayer in this town. You've seen our values go up, and the utilities are, they're about 10% of the, um, there's 3%, whatever is that I've done the math, but I'd be interested in a detailed analysis of how their total uh, taxable value uh, and what the givebacks are, including the $240,000 in lieu of tax uh, payment by Next Tower. And that's going yep. forward. Sure. Yep. Again, uh, a, a magnificent report, and uh, thank you. You've done a, a magnificent job this summer with the reevaluation, and we're, we're lucky to have you on board. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Rick. Thank you, Ed, for everything you do. You do a great job. You are uh, very. You have a good way with dealing with all the people that you've had to deal with recently, and we're happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. When do we set the tax rate? <clears throat> tax rate, uh, what we'll do is the MS1 is due by the 15th, so once it's signed by the board, um, probably tomorrow afternoon, I will uh, send those over to the DRA. We'll be put in a, 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 the queue or the query, um, and once um, all the other pieces of the tax rate get submitted, meaning the precinct, the schools, and the county, 
um, they'll they'll set our rate typically sometime uh, towards the end of October. I just know a lot of people are concerned with the the evaluation of their house going up, of looking at our previous tax rate, and um, they should be able. To, uh, should there should be some way that we can at least find out a rough idea of what the uh, tax rate may be reduced because of the evaluation. Well, I think we can, and I think, believe Christie may be um, looking at the town portion, which is, can kind of get an idea of the town portion, um, the county and the school portion and the, and the local school portion. Um, if you look at it percentage-wise, you can kind of get an estimate, but without knowing what they're submitting as a budget, um, right. it would be harder for us to pinpoint that. But um, if you look at what the town went up in taxable value, there should be some relationship to the decrease in the tax rate. may not be exactly the 18% even, but it should have some close relationship. Okay. Very good. Okay. All set. Yep. Thank you. Thank All you right. very Thank much. You. Thank Thanks you. Thanks, Ed. The next one is uh, Chris Jacobs, DPW Director, Jen Hale, Deputy DPW Director, John Nyan, and Experience Hampton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Thank you very much for uh, taking time uh, this evening. Um, before we uh, go into why we're here tonight, I'd like to introduce um, some members of Experience Hampton, uh, John Tinius, who will say just a few words about the 2020 uh, project of Experience Hampton because he was the, uh, the strategist behind the concept. And so he'll just, just brief everybody on the 2020. And then in the audience, uh, we have other board members um, Diane Withy, uh, Dean Merrill, Bob Preston, George Preve, Kristen Russell, and of course, your own chairman who sits as a board member of Experience Hampton, Rusty Bridal. So saying that, uh, let me turn it over uh, to John for a minute. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for uh, having us uh, here tonight. Uh, Experience Hampton uh, was really a thought that came to me after my mother passed. Um, wanted to do something uh, that would honor her and we had been, the board and I had been talking uh, about what we could do to, um, you know, to be part of uh, the solutions of Hampton uh, for a better, a better community, uh, more progress uh, and safety uh, as well as, um, you know, individual economic development. So uh, in doing that, in the spirit of my mother, who uh, always uh, loved it when somebody improved their property in town, uh, put a fresh coat of paint on, <coughs> planted flowers, uh, expanded, uh, but just made in general, made Hampton look good and be a vibrant community. Uh, we decided to undertake a fund called the 2020 Fund, uh, which we uh, have raised money for um, the last couple of years. And uh, the first project that we did uh, was the cross uh, the, the pathway from the municipal lot uh, to the uh, center of town, uh, which I think turned out very beautifully, uh, well lit, uh, safe, um, and a really class act for people that are um, either visiting us or residents in town. Along those lines, we want to continue to on that on that safety. Uh, issue uh, to improve the crosswalks in town. This is uh, the current issue uh, that we're um, involved in. And uh, this would be an enhancement uh, to the crosswalks already uh, with a, um, I believe a solar lighted um, system that would uh, alert the motorists as well as um, enable the um, pedestrian to safely cross uh, across the walks walkways in Hampton, uh, we're starting out in a phase approach. Uh, we have one in set uh, 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 for the uh, south end by um, right across from Eddie's uh, to uh, the CVS, which is a, a 
tough crosswalk. And then we have another one in the northern part of town, uh, close to the um, um, Best Western. And I believe that the schools are undertaking enhanced crosswalks uh, this year also, and town has uh, been a partner with us. Uh, they were a partner with us in the uh, in the pathway from the uh, parking lot to the middle of town. Uh, this private-public partnership uh, is a great thing for Hampton, uh, and we see several other uh, projects down the road uh, that will make Hampton uh, really a shining star amongst the the towns in the area. Thank you. Okay. So at a, uh, a recent meeting of the Board of Directors of Experience Hampton, it was voted on and it was unanimous that uh, for our 2016-2020 project that once again we would partner with the town, specifically with the Department of Public Works, um, and um, help contribute to the cost of two uh, LED crosswalks, um, as John had mentioned, one in the uh, south end of town and one in the north end of town. Uh, so we're here tonight uh, to present a check to the town for $6,612, uh, $6, which will cover 50% of the cost of those two crosswalks. Um, we also plan to provide uh, additional funds for additional crosswalks um, as the town continues to uh, improve the uh, roadway uh, between uh, Winnicott and High Street which I believe is a 2017 effort, which once again, Experience Hampton uh, would like very much to participate in and not only uh, support, but financially support through some fundraising efforts, uh, both state uh, grants and uh, public uh, private funding. Um, and I'm sure you all will hear more about that, but um, hopefully uh, this will help in the, uh, the cost of those two uh, crosswalks and uh, we're, we're delighted once again to be able to partner with the town of Hampton. So, Chris? Thank you. Um, yes, uh, I'm very pleased to say that I um, very much enjoyed so far working with experienced Hampton Group. Um, it's great to see a, finally a public private partnership where we're not always asked to do everything. Um, and, and They've taken the initiative, if you will, for you know, certain projects, especially that Greg sidewalk project, I call it, not because it's next to Greg's. But um, it was a trip hazard before. It's a piece of beauty now. It's something that um, I don't cringe when we have to maintain it, clear snow, uh, things of that nature. So the next thing that came to light was you know, some of these particular crosswalks. Um, while I don't think that lighted crosswalks, and what I mean by lighted crosswalks is the actual, there's actually flashers on the uh, crosswalks, standard crosswalk symbol sign that you see. Uh, solar powered, uh, there's a push button so that if someone approaches a crosswalk and wants to use it, they press the button, uh, motorists would get used to the fact that there is in fact someone standing there that wants to use the crosswalk, whether they can see them or not, in the dark or basically at any time of day. Um, so this, I agree with them that this, the sites that we've suggested or floated around is between Best Western and Logan's Run because it's a mid, what I call a mid-intersection crosswalk. Motors don't expect to, to see people normally crossing there. Um, and the other location is, as you said, from between uh, CVS side of uh, Lafayette Road and the Crazy Eddie's side of uh, Lafayette Road because my understanding in, in talking to the former chief is there have been fatalities in that section of road with pedestrians. Uh, so certainly this type of lighting system is warranted in those locations. Um, but uh, it's your, if you concur, I leave it to you to accept the money and um, we definitely have it within our budget to get this done this year. Um, probably within 60 days of uh, award. And um, yes, the school is also putting in one right up front as part of their project. 
So the systems will all be similar. Um, the components will be interchangeable. Matter of fact, if I need a new battery, I just go to Radio Shack or buy the thing online. It's not what you call rocket science work. Um, same thing with the solar panel. Um, it's all 12 volt. Anybody can essentially plug and play. I'll make so, a motion to accept that. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to accept and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. John, you had something else you wanted to say? Yeah, I just wanted to commend the, um, the chief over here on Public Works that uh, the job that they did with the, it was a tough job in the middle of the summer uh, with the, water, the new water lines, uh, and along with the, uh, I think the police department, uh, that rerouted things so that uh, businesses could still open, and uh, I think they did a really good job uh, in uh, providing safety for the for people and also uh, keeping us open. Thank you. Excellent. Well, I just want to say that these these two crosswalks is coming in. With the one heading on the south southern end of town is where people start to pick up speed. Yeah. And so this will be coming as you come north. That's where it is. And the one on the northern end, they start to pick up speed up in that area too, because there, it is, as he said, like center span. Uh, it's not at a cross, uh, at a traffic signal, so the, the speed is there. Uh, both of these sidewalks, and crosswalks, are used very much so, and I think it's a it's a great addition to town. So, thank you very much. Do we want to? You want to do a? Can we just do a? Can we just take a couple of minutes or a minute or two? They just want to do a picture with. Them to give an, uh, us accepting the check. So, can we take a five minute recess? So, I want to just let them know in there. Call the chair. I'm sure yeah. they heard you. Yeah. Yeah, they did. They heard it. They heard it. We thought you were asleep. We knew you were. Rusty, you got this. Rusty, you got it. Here or where do you want to? Yeah, wherever you, we can do it up here. Go on. Okay. I think Preston would be better up there. back the king right. uh the, our next appointment again is uh chris jacobs dbw director jennifer hale deputy dbw director we'll let jennifer address this one uh this first one that we're here for is the uh basically the clean water state revolving fund loan application uh, this is what i think i talked about at the last meeting so two weeks ago uh, that the state has a program uh, where we can uh, implement this asset management uh, software and start doing inventories on our drain and sewer lines. Uh, and basically the way this works is that it is loan forgiveness. Uh, we are requesting $60,000. Uh, we would be getting $30,000 back from the wastewater component and $30,000 back from the stormwater component. So the net expenditure would be zero. 
Uh, but to be very clear, since it is the, the state funds, it is a loan first. So you accept the loan, and then they forgive our, um, our balance. So I needed to bring it here before you guys tonight uh, for a formal matter so that we could uh, hopefully authorize us to uh, borrow the money and then pay it back. Well, we wouldn't be because it would be loan forgiveness uh, and go on from there. And once we have this vote, our application is complete. Okay. Any questions? I don't have any questions. Any questions? Oh, well. Negative, sir. No. This is, just a, this is a formal. Well. So we need to have a motion to accept the application or accept well, you submitting the motion to, us to, for, to allow us to exp expend, accept the money and then expend it. You you understand make a motion right. to allow them to accept the money and then expend the money with the CW as yep. application. It agreed to allow us to take the loan. I mean, that is the premise of accepting and then expending. Right. And agree to allow them to accept the loan. Yeah. So I have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Good. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Next one is the uh, sidewalk uh, waiver of the purchasing policy. Uh, so this one actually comes in at a good time uh, following the safety improvements that we're looking uh, to team with the Experience Hampton. We had put out to bid, or actually let me back up a little bit. Um, our approved budget last year included money within a sidewalk line for us to do repairs and maintenance of the sidewalks. We also went and requested um, through the Warren article process additional monies um, as sidewalk repairs were falling behind and uh, we had more war work than money uh, to get it done. So with that being said, we identified a section of uh, walkway sort of looking at the big picture. Um, as was mentioned, the school was looking to do a project out here on Winnicunit Road uh, between basically the school down uh, to the town hall as a safety improvement. We we're looking at the big picture. Um, the school did the whole Safe Routes to School program for everybody um, that is riding and bicycling to school. I was here a few weeks ago talking about the TAP grant uh, that was submitted for a million dollars that would actually take uh, the sidewalks and improve the whole streetscape from Winnicunit Road down to Mill Road. Uh, so this portion that we put out to bid for the sidewalk uh, sort of melts into that, um, as well as our capital improvement plan, and that's for sidewalks along High Street. This section is from Hobbs Road to Marston School, uh, on the Marston School side, so the north side of the sidewalk. Uh, we put the project out to bid. We followed the uh, revised purchasing policy. We sent it out by mail to 11 different contractors, also posted it to our website. Uh, we received zero bids back. Uh, it was a little bit disappointing because we thought and hoped with uh, the school also putting out a bid that the extra work would be an enticement uh, for someone to want to come in and do the sidewalks within town. So we met with the school. Uh, we actually sent out a revised bid. Uh, we put a cover letter with it explaining that we had um, two bids. They were going out side by side, although independent. It would be you know, extra work in town. We extended the bid due date. We also extended the deliverables date as we had heard that maybe that was part of it. People were just too busy this summer uh, to get the work done. So we actually extended it to you know the end of the construction season to give them the opportunity. Again, sent it out to 11 contractors, uh, did some follow-up calls, put it on the website. We received one bid. Uh, the one bid that came back in, uh, within this bid, we had it broken into two sections. Not only would it be the Marston uh, to Hobbs Road segment that we were talking about, that part of our presentation to both you and the Budget Committee is that we'd make some ADA improvements uh, throughout town. So we had identified eight ramps on sidewalks along High Street uh, that were included in this bed uh, to bring up to code. So long story short, the bid came in too high. We only got one bidder. Uh, fortunately, or at least the way I see it, is that in the bid, we did say that we had the right, due to our budgetary constraints, to add or to remove work from the scope. 
And by taking four of those accessible ramps and the Marston Road project, we would have enough money to complete that work. So I'm here explaining that process as well as the fact that we didn't get, you know, three bidders. So that would require a bid waiver, um, and looking uh, to basically allow us to move forward uh, with the bid that was presented, modified, to include the four out of the eight ramps in the Marston Road project, uh, to move forward with the bid with one mathematical correction uh, that was found. Um, within the bid, it was an error on our part. Um, it was consistent both times, so it isn't the reason people didn't bid. In fact, it put the um, section of the bid $3,000 higher. They didn't lose any money because of it. And we are looking to do the asphalt component because it's asphalt sidewalk out there now from Marston to Hobbs Road. So those are the three components of the bid that we're here for. Questions? <laughs> um, so, so Jamco is the only one that you heard from, correct? And then it so it went from eighty-five, almost eighty-six thousand, down to sixty-four thousand. That's because it's only eight. It's now only four instead of eight. Correct. Okay. And the sixty is the money that we have versus the money. Right. That is the money that's the Warren article as well as our budget lined to complete this work. Okay. I keep running into this problem with bidding. I mean, the reason why nobody bids? Um, there's a lot of good work out there, bigger work, mm -hmm. more profitable work for them. Um, we had truly hoped that by combining this with the school's work that, you know, uh, a contractor could, let's say, excavate and form up sidewalks on High Street on four crossings, yet then jump over to the school project and place or pour sidewalks there. So it was hoped that that would bring more people in, but still, um, everybody's su super busy. And this is not, uh, we're not the only town. Uh, I ran into a previous coworker in Portsmouth, and they have three shelf ready jobs just waiting. They put them out to bid, no bids. Um, there's other work out there that is getting done. And, and you've put this out to bid twice, you read? Twice, and 11 bidders, mailed list, and our website. Right, okay. Uh, support uh, the effort and uh, have no comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> what have you got to say about it, Mr. Welch? They've done their due diligence. Um, we should make these improvements for the public safety and for the safety of the people who are using the sidewalks. And this is our opportunity to get it done before the winter comes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So I need a motion to make a motion that we waive the, the bidding po uh, policy in order to have them move forward. Second the motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Right. Thank you. Thank you. It was nice to see that that tree came down in that area. I know that that sidewalk is in, in real bad shape and it's mm -hmm. used by so many kids. It was heaved almost six, seven inches over an area of 10 feet. Uh, part of this work, this dump will get removed and it'll be reconstructed to be five feet wide. And and it, and it I think the really important part here is the big picture because we'll, we're going to be doing this. I mean, that's our plan is sidewalks throughout town and it, it meshes with the school's plans to fix that intersection for Marston, the uh, area down here by center, the top grant, you know, for all of Winnicott, you know, Academy's overall plan. So it's just really a, a and good And so we have four. So next year, hopefully we can get some more money for the ADA. Yeah, and and that's and the other thing. By awarding the project, um, you're also showing to the bidders out there that you are, in fact, committed to doing this kind of work. Um, one of the things that I think that they face is, why, why should I put in my Thursday evening or Wednesday evening putting together a bid on something that if they don't get three or more bids, they're going to not award? No, we, we've shown that you're we serious about, the voters showed that they were serious about getting sidewalk work done. That's why they approved the Warren article. So we have to make every effort to follow through with that. And I think this, this sends a message loud and clear. So next year, other people will be saying, hey, Hampton's got some sidewalk work out there. So. And we, we've talked in the past about Toll Ave yep. mm -hmm. and, and that, that sidewalk there that needs to be 
redone. We have so. a right-of-way issue, plus the gas company wants to do a lot of work in toll, plus we need to replace the sewer first. So it's not just replacing the sewer? No, and that was our original, because we were going to start, you know, east and uh, west and head east, uh, but we ran into a right-of-way issue on toll. So, okay. I just want to say, you know, applaud the effort for the sidewalks and the school, the effort for the sidewalks, because Hampton is a very unfriendly pedestrian town in a lot of areas, and I, th I think anything we can do to improve that is is just yep. a good thing for the town. Yep. We agree. And I think it's just the beginning. You know, we have all the sidewalks that have begun be doing being dealt with at the beach, and it's time to make sure that the infrastructure is improved everywhere. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank All you. Set. Thank you. The next one is uh, Peter Ross, 230 Exeter Road, change of use abatement. Good evening. I'm Peter Ross, 230 Exeter Road, LLC. And first of all, I want to apologize for the mix-up last week. I'm not too familiar with how this process works, obviously. Um, I don't know if you people are familiar with 230 Exeter Road property. I know some of you have seen, I know the chairman was at the planning board, but if you'd like to take a look at what we're talking about, a quick picture. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, I don't really know what to do from this point. Uh, I could read the letter into the record, Mr. Chairman, that we sent you, or I can just answer questions from the board. Well, um, I think we all have received copies of that letter. I don't think we need it read. I don't think if anybody has any questions, um, I'd first like to hear from our town manager to see what his view of that is, and then uh, we'll go from there and ask questions of the board. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. And Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, it's within your purview to do abatements for taxes that are assessed. Currently, the taxes are not assessed for the current use tax penalty on this particular property, but they will be the minute Mr. Ross decides to take a building permit and, and start work on that property, then the assessing department will, under the statute, assess the current use tax penalty. And at that time, he is free to come back to, to you and ask for what he wishes in this particular area. That's the time you have the opportunity to make an abatement if you think that's necessary. Um, and I'll ask. I'll, I guess I'll let him explain why he wants to do this. Uh, this gets quite involved, I think, but uh, I think he can simplify it quite quickly. So, Well, about three years ago, we bought the land, and yeah. we had intentions of developing the back part of the land, which is a G zone, and we don't need any variances to build back there. We can just build whatever it is that would go along with the zoning laws, the density laws. Um, but about the same time we bought that land, uh, uh, our project at the end of Winter Cunnett Road came online, and so we kind of put that on the back burner, and we heard from a lot of different people, uh, abutters, uh, Conservation Commission, other people in town, about what was going to happen to the land, and there was an overwhelming response that they would basically like to see nothing built there. So um, yep. can't really do that. I got a lot of money tied up into this property. So over the years now, we've kind of worked out a solution that that if we are allowed to build, and I already have been to the boards, and that's all been approved, if we're allowed to build two houses up on Exeter Road, we would donate the 12 acres of land to the town. Um, and in doing so, uh, following the procedures, we went to see Ed Tinker and he told us that uh, in order to get that that abatement uh, for the, the fee or fine or whatever it is, um, uh, we would, I'd have to come before the board and I'm here. So the way the way I see it is is you know uh, the way I understand it is that we can't do the abatement until you actually start to build. And that's when they can assess the the that's when they assess the fee. That's correct. So at 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 such time as you take your when you take your permit out and you start your project, that's when the fee starts to kick in. And so we don't even know what that fee can be until you actually start to do that. No, we, we all know what the fee is. Uh, we, Mr. Tinker, uh, the fee is uh, $30,000. Uh, 
Um, and it's called a current use tax. Penalty. When you <clears throat> when you pull the land out of current use, um, it's assessed. Um, but with this particular property where we're donating the 12 acres of land, it basically doesn't come out of current use. It stays in current use. The, the land would be donated to the town to do with what they want. Um, it's a fairly substantial piece of land. Tuck Fields, 10.2 acres, and and this is 12 acres. It's a it's a substantial piece of land. So, questions? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Ross. I uh, have read your uh, 17 August letter to the board of selectmen and uh, the chair. Um, of course, the current use is triggered by uh, the actual um, taking the land out of current use, and that is an event that is to occur when, in your mind, will you be doing this? Right away. I mean, I've been going this through month, all the boards. Month, Everything got, is got done, and I'm, and I'm ready to move on this, but I, I need, you I have need just, to know. Thank you, and you've stated, and I support, I support your intent here, and I, I, I have had property that is uh, uh, in current use, and I have property in current use. I'm very familiar with it, and um, there's not a lot of it in Hampton. Not really. And it's very valuable land. We just uh, saw the MS-1 presented. Uh, we have billions, uh, well, well over a billion dollars worth of property in, in this town, and, and your property is part of that. Um, and you, you stated tonight that um, that uh, the town, in donating this land, we could do with that land what we wanted. You would that have no correct. objection from the town of Hampton um, uh, transferring that to uh, the Conservation Commission, the Conservation Easement? I have no problem I'm with that. None. Part of the reason that I did that was I watched you people go through a, a, about a month ago with a couple of acres of land further down the street from us that if it went to the Conservation Commission, it sort of ties everything up, and I figured I would let the board decide what they wanted to do with it rather than me. Thank you. And and uh, you further stated in your letter uh, of 17 August that you have uh, timber rights on that property. You could uh, cut down um, $40,000 worth of timber and destroy the uh, the conservation value and the uh, the undeveloped value of that land. Is that correct? That is correct. If you I mean, chose it, to. It has been pay, a wood lot and now then for pay, hundreds of years. And then pay that tax if we did not offer you any uh, relief. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Got that. Uh, I, su I support your intent. Uh, there's a trigger to that, which would be um, you getting the approval and going and commencing that, but I, uh, I would approve uh, the maximum amount of relief that we could possibly provide uh, when you do uh, uh, go ahead and execute this uh, transaction. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Rick? <coughs> I agree with Phil. Gina. Totally. Agreement as well. Yeah, I'm in agreement as well because originally you were going to, you were talking about condos there, right? C correct. Right, and now you're talking just about two houses, two single-family houses, houses, which would fit the the neighborhood, neighborhood and, and go along with more what <laughs> others are looking for. So, so you're trying to you're trying to vet, you know use your land the best way you can and arrive at a, at an equitable situation. And donating the 12 acres to the town, I I, I would also support it. You know, I mean, when the trigger comes and when we can do it, I would right. be in support of it. So I, I think you, you heard this. this would, would I have to come back or would Mr. Tinker be able to handle this? See, that's what I thought last week. I thought that this all had to go through Ed Tinker, the assessor. I think you actually have to file a request for abatement. And Ed has that form. With the board or with Ed? Well, it goes to Ed and Ed sends it to the board. Ed sends it to the board and then... It, it, it's obviously here that this board will probably approve that. Right. So, uh, but you have to do that first. You have to get your building permit, start your process, and then ask for the abatement. Right. And then that that will come to us, and that will be our trigger to go ahead and approve that. Very good. Thank you. And, and uh, Mr. Welch, does yes, uh, is there any possibility that they could use that uh, land for something besides conservation land? I mean, it's given to the town. The town can use it for any purpose it sees fit to use it for. Yeah, because that would be better in and case someday in the future something was... You might want to use it for something else. And yes. there is access off Langdale, I believe. There's a 50-foot there. right away off Langdale, yes, right. that, so. that goes with the land. Right. Yeah. So, that's a good point. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Very good. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks, Peter. Dennis Thompson, Northern New England Field Services. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I came before the board a couple of weeks ago uh, with a similar request to uh, repair some seawalls and build some revetments on Ocean Boulevard, um, just down the beach from what I appear here for tonight, which is number 16 through number 32. Uh, northeast lane um, these folks got a permit um, on November 7th of 2013 to do this work um, for one reason or another it hasn't been accomplished at that point their uh, permit is only good for five years since we're working adjacent to their properties anyway um, they approached me to do the work for them and we've come to an agreement and uh, it would appear that the engineering firm they hired the uh, the final step in their process they've been before all the boards and gotten their approvals is just to get the selectmen's approval to uh, use the beach which in fact is the same piece of beach we're going to be going across to get to the other project anyway i'll make that motion i'll second it all those in favor unanimous Good. thank you very much there you go okay <laughs> Bob Dockham, street naming, Wanda Robinson Drive. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm here because I found out about two weeks ago that uh, the name of my development that was um, approved of uh, 2014 was voted to be changed to Wanda Robertson as opposed to Robertson Drive. Um, Nobody notified me that there was even a problem. I know it's a 911 issue. I understand that issue. I fully understand that issue, and I don't want that to be a problem, but I'm not overly fond of the name, um, and I wanted to come before the board to discuss it to see if there was any other possibilities. It wasn't just Wanda that was on the agenda for that name. There was also a Bernie who was the fire chief. Deputy, call deputy, was Bernie. I'm sorry. Call deputy. Called deputy. deputy chief, yes. So, I mean, this was all brought up and brought before you guys, and I d had no notice about it even being on the agenda. Okay. To be able to discuss it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Duckham, I made that motion, uh, or so moved, and uh, it's summertime in Hampton, mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, a busy time. You had been in a series of uh, uh, communications uh, with everybody but uh, the Board of Selectmen. I just received this, uh, your, your email traffic, um, uh, several days ago. And had I had access to this information, uh, I would not have made that motion. Uh, and <coughs> this is just my opinion. Um, and I want to. Uh, Exhort the the highest respect for Wanda Robertson. I, I agree. And I, and I, no I, disrespect I know, I know meant to her right? or her and family. I, and I feel um, uncomfortable with with the whole notion. And now her name's being bantered about, and it's it's no slight on her. But I had not, I had not uh, the privilege to read this. Again, it's summertime. It's yep. high tempo of operations, and sometimes these things uh, don't come to the surface. So uh, there's there's more than one issue in here, but I, I do support your statements, your comments, and uh, I know I wouldn't have made the uh, the motion, and I would have been much more sensitive to your uh, concerns and uh, perhaps some options that you have that are consistent. Uh, naming former uh, public employees or town employees that uh, are no longer with us. Mm -hmm. And having said that, um, I'm open to uh, other options on this name of the street. And again, want to state that um, had I had this, um, I think there might have been a different decision, at mm -hmm. least on my part. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Kirk? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> again, I really feel bad about. Um, you know, Wanda, she was such a nice person and everything. I personally did not think it was a good idea to begin with. Um, and <clears throat> I can understand how it would be difficult. Everyone that's going to live there, people are going to say, who's Wanda Robinson? And, um, so it is, it's an uncomfortable position that everybody's in now because 
I myself wish that we had just stayed with the way that it always was, which was that the streets be named after people that have been um, killed in the line of duty, even if they have to go back to other wars or whatever. And I think that eliminates a lot of problems coming. But this board's made it uh, different, you know, to do a different strategy. So we'll see what happens. Gina? I mean, I don't, I get, can we readdress re it? I mean, if it's. Jim? Uh, may, may I, Mr. Chairman? Is there, okay. is there a preference uh, for a name that you have, Mr. Document? It is not a public road, is it yet? Is that I'm more than willing to work with the town. I just didn't think that that wasn't uh, a great name. Um, you know, there were a lot of towns. Uh, I don't know if you guys are renaming a lot of streets and roads in town, but you got Hemlock Haven, Hemlock Street, Hobbs, Hobson, Jones Ave, Jones Court, uh, Millbourne Mill, Mill Road, Moore, Mooring. May, Oak, may, Oakdale. May I suggest to you, and in, in, uh, the, the intent appears to be that um, we, we, we would cooperate with you if you work with uh, the um, um, emergency responders and 911 folks and in accordance with the town and, and work with Mr. Welch uh, and come up with a couple of options and then we could revisit this. Okay, and I just, some of those names you mentioned are, are, are you're correct, but also some of those are private developments and private roads. They're not, they're not town roads. Right. And so we wouldn't have an option of. I'm looking somebody, to turn this one to town, Rusty. Right. But, it but isn't you yet. mentioned Hemlock and the Hemlock Haven. Well, Hemlock Haven is a private trail park. Okay. That's I just it. was going by some of right. the names. And right. And it, I'm just letting you know that sure. that's the difference. If it's a privately owned piece of property, we don't have a. We really wouldn't have any, anything to say. But if it gets turned over to the town, we do have a right to what it, what it is right. said. And some of those other ones, the mill and Millburn, um, I mean, they've been around for a long period of time. Yeah, there's quite a few. The most recent similar. one was Hilliard, uh, which is where Kathy Rush was here, where she was commenting she didn't like the name of it either. Um, and that's from somebody from a war, which all, in recent years, all of the streets that have been named have been from previous wars. But we've, mm -hmm. we've run out of that list, too. No, there's so. still plenty there. It's just we're back into wars that people don't remember. But, you know, there's going to be, there in the future, there's going to be other things um, I'm surprised Hampton didn't lose any one from any of the more recent wars. No, we haven't. So That's, we're very lucky. Miss, yes, I hope you never do. Just, Ms. Dasari told me that someone recently passed that's in the military uh, from Hampton. I don't really know, but uh, that was just I was trying to do my homework, too, because I'm here to work with the town. Yep, yep, we understand. Mr. Town Manager, have you got anything you want to? Well, we have a list of names that, uh, and you're right, some of these wars are, shall we say, forgotten. Mm -hmm. You know, the war of uh, uh, King Philip's War and uh, Queen Anne's War and some of the other wars that this town has fought in, which were colonial wars here. Um, unfortunately, a lot of those names are, are too close to the names of existing streets. Um, so I went and started searching, and I looked through uh, the tabulation of individuals who were elected to the Executive Council, uh, the State Senate, uh, the state senate presidency and um, the uh, speakers of the House of Representatives and state treasurers. And uh, unfortunately, with the exception of two, those names have all been used. So we, we continue to look. Um, uh, the two that weren't used are Robert F. Preston and Beverly A. Hollingworth, uh, who are fairly recent as far as office holders are concerned. And they are both still living in town. So. Um, but we can continue to search for additional names. There's uh, uh, Lovell's War, where we have 110 names we haven't even been able to find. In fact, the state can't find them. So we, we mm -hmm. continue to search for those. But we do have a few names. Most of them are the result of the, uh, the war between the states, the Civil War. Um, and those names come about because people purchased a replacement for themselves, so they didn't have to go fight. And, <laughs> and some of those replacements died, but they weren't residents of the town. So uh, we're, we're running out of names. I've asked Public Works and, and uh, uh, to give me the list of names of people who have died working for the town from the DPW. We understand there are a couple of those. I'm just waiting to get those names. Uh, and I'm looking for names from the police and fire departments from earlier years 
where we wouldn't have full-time departments, but we'd have part-time departments to see if they have any names there as well. So but I think most of those names have been exhausted. Mm -hmm. Senator Preston uh, would make it interesting. <laughs> but he's already alive, and I, that's kind of a, a tough one to do. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, it is. So I like I like Mr. Uh, Bean's, uh, you know, well, maybe we can, town manager's working on a list of other options. Sure. And it's going to be a while before you turn the road over to the town anyways. Sure. Uh, but I'm sure if once they start delivering mail, they're going to want to know what the name of the street is. Well, we quick. do have one resident on the street now. So, so. Um, uh, we, we need to do that sooner than later. Yep. Um, so why don't you give us a couple of weeks, see if we can come up with a list. Okay. You don't Maybe abbreviate be... like a B. Robertson for Bernie kind of a thing. I was trying to think of different things. Yep, yep. Yeah. So, uh, but we'll, we'll try to come up with something and... Uh, why don't you give the town manager a couple of weeks? Okay. We'll run them through 911 to make sure whatever names we come up with are acceptable to 911. Sure. So, because so. that takes some time to do. It takes about a week for them to check them all. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank Very you, good. gentlemen. Thank have you. a good evening. Next thing we have is the approval of the minutes for August 22nd. Make a motion to approve them. Motion approved. Second, second by Regina. All those in favor? No. Minutes of August 29th. I'll make a motion to approve them. Second, second by Jim. All those in favor? Unanimous. Town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, I reported that the solid waste tonnages have increased for August 2016 versus 2015. Uh, the re refuse volume is up 56 tons. <coughs> this year compared to last, and the recycling volume was up 37 tons this year compared to last. That represents approximately six additional trips to, to disposal of materials collected. Please remember that recycling materials are tipped at no cost to the town. That is to say we can dump, the, we have to pay for the transportation, but the tipping on the floor saves us more than $60 a ton. That's a lot of material, and I, I'll, I'll say this again, I haven't said it in quite a while, that uh, if everybody in town recycled all the paper they receive, that would be 50% of our total tonnage, and our total cost for the uh, tonnage that's shipped to turnkey would go down by 50%. The budget would be cut by 50% of all that paper was recycled. Um, the fecal coliform counts uh, in Mill Creek uh, are down from 8.1 to 7.1 uh, per 100 milliliters uh, in August versus July. The legal limit is 14 uh, per 100 milliliters. Uh, the budget, budget reviews are progressing. Budget revisions have been distributed to the departments, and, we sub and they will submit uh, their questions and observations and objections during the coming week. We hope to get that finished in relatively short order so we can put those books together and give them to the Board of Selectmen for your review. Departments are scheduled to submit warrant article drafts by the end of the week. Uh, once submitted for legal review, they will be scheduled for final drafts and will be distributed to the Board of Selectmen for review and culling. The final paving is already completed, was scheduled for the last week, uh, weather permitting, and we, we finished that. There are adjustments to be made and, and cleanup to be done and, and uh, finish, finish paving to be accomplished, which is a lot of, it, a lot of its hand. So. The paving comp, uh, comp that was approved by the uh, town meeting uh, has been completed, and uh, the only thing that's left to be done now is a crack sealing of various roadways to keep them from deteriorating further so that we will not have to pave too many of them in the future until they are ready by age. And that's it, Mr. Chairman. Okay, any questions for the town manager? I don't have anything, Mr. Chairman. So. We just want to keep that recycling encouraging, 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 right? Um, this is the one time when really the individual citizens of the town have the opportunity to substantially cut that appropriation, and they can do it simply by recycling all the paper. That's 50% of our total tonnage. That's a lot of weight. And uh, we, um, if we could get rid of that, we could cut our, our cost by 50%. That's a lot of money. Okay. Now, what are we doing to encourage to 
get more recycling? We uh, we keep on telling people, uh, we, we particularly new residents who come in, uh, I think a lot of times people uh, just take and tear up their materials and, and, and throw them in the trash bag. Um, you know, if you shred them, we'll take the shreddings. That's not a big deal. We'll take those, uh, put them in a plastic bag, and they'll get dumped in with 20 tons of other paper, uh, and it'll disappear. Um, if you have a home shredder, we, we ask people to use that, of course. Um, if, and I, I know people are sensitive about the material they throw away and the material they, they give to recycling because it's got credit card numbers and other things on it, so we would suggest that people shred that and, and give us the shreddings because they're not going to be valuable to anyone when they're mixed with 20-some tons of other paper. Uh, that's our biggest effort. Uh, obviously, we have all the other materials that are recyclable. Our heaviest weight is glass. That's the heaviest weight we handle. Uh, but that's extremely abrasive for our equipment to handle. But nevertheless, it takes away a lot of tonnage. If everything that's glass that runs through your house is recycled, that can save a lot of money. So it's possible. Um, when I worked in New London, just to give you an idea, we set up a recycling operation, which was drop-off. It wasn't curbside collection. But during the course of uh, doing that, in uh, year two, after a complete start, which was a uh, partial year, in year one, we actually paid the cost of running the transfer station, the employees' wages, and the overhead for their, their benefits just off of recycling. So it, it can be done and it's a good thing to do. It's to our benefit to pick up recycling as much as possible. Absolutely. Okay. Well, no, nothing. Thank you, Mr. Wells. Thank you, sir. Is it all types of glass or just? There are certain types of glass that are not recyclable with the glass, the glass industries. Uh, Pyrex glass, for instance, is not recyclable. Uh, there is a list, Public Works has a list, and anybody who wants to see that list, Call Public Works, they'd be happy to give it to you. You have to fax it out to you, mail it out to you, or do whatever, email it to you. Um, there, but there are certain types of glass that are not recyclable. Mm -hmm. And they're few and far between. As, as time goes along, um, when we were with um, the, the company in, in, in Portland, Maine, they took all types of glass because it was, it was being used as cullet, which means it was being used in construction. Uh, if we could use it in construction in this state, which is difficult to do because DOT doesn't really want to do that, uh, we could take everything that, that is a glass in nature. Glass is just basically sand, mm -hmm. so processed sand. Yeah, well, I noticed today that Seabrook has painted on their trucks, Seabrook Recycles. Yes, that's And it's true. pretty noticeable. Yep. Yep. And, you know, I don't know if maybe that's that their, would... That's their recycling truck. They have a huge recycling truck. You can't yeah, miss it's it. It's big. It's as big as a house. It made me look at it twice, yeah. but it, it was it was all over it about the recycling. Right. Maybe that would help in the summertime if we, we had something like that so that when the trucks went around the beach, it would people would see it. We right? can certainly do that. No yeah, question about that it. That might be a good idea. Yeah. Good idea. And I was just sitting here thinking that also Hampton had a first lady of, you know, uh, Jane Appleton Pierce. Yes. She did something for her country. Yes, she certainly did, and we're one of the few towns that have ever had a first lady of the United States. So there aren't very many of them. Um, and there is a road in town named after her. There is. There is. And uh, we try every year on her birthday to go to Concord and put a wreath on her grave on behalf of the town. One thing, uh, sir, we had this letter from the gentleman from Seaborn Condos. Yes. Um, can we bring that up now? Is that uh, certainly. All right. Call the chair. Um, uh, and seeing that he's still here. Um, does anybody have a uh, uh, recommendation with this? On, on, for the parking? For, for the parking for the, for the couple of weeks, two weeks? You know, I, I think, what's the problem? I, you know, I would say do it. I, I know that where I live in my condo, when they were paving the parking lot, yeah. 
that people parked overnight in the municipal lot across the street and called the police department and they allowed us to do that and it was only for a little bit of time and so it worked nicely. So I need somebody to make a motion to I'll make a motion that no, we second it. So the motion and second it to allow the uh Seaborn Condo Association to use the three spots <coughs> water and Cusack Road for the for the uh construction for two weeks. And what about the um, uh, overnight? What is the, what's the policy about? We need overnight to vote on parking? the first one. Oh, yeah, yeah, we need to vote on that. Yeah. So, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank there you. you go. There are some overnight spaces, and you can allow them to park overnight there. No, but I mean, he like he's saying that there's a limited amount of part of overnight spaces there. What's the town policy on that? Uh, that policy was established by the board, and each one of those spaces is marked. I believe there's five of them total. Yeah, there's only a handful. Yeah. The problem being is a lot of us, like I said, have, you know, children, grandchildren, and right. you can't park anywhere, and you yep. have a whiskey on a dollar ticket. Yep. It's kind of well, unfair. what's the policy of the ones that are on, the, the ones the state owns at, for overnight? <clears throat> as long as they take down and, and cover their... Um, machines that issue the tickets which usually happens the end of October you can park all the rest of the year until they take those covers off again yeah but I mean even now they stop at one o'clock they yeah. do but that's not what their regulations say the regulations say 24 hours a day 365 days a year they they determine when they're going to cease at some point which is usually sometime in October uh, and then anybody can park that's when they cover the kiosks um, Short of that, technically, you're supposed to pay to park there all the time. Now, I know they don't enforce that, so. The, uh, the hard part I'm seeing is if, if you, the more overnight parking you make, the harder it is for us to get in there and clean those. We do allow uh, parking in some of the municipal parking lots when a snow emergency is declared. Right. And then we, 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 we plow some paths through and request people to remove them by a certain time the following day so we can go in and clean the lots. And if it continues to snow, they can park there again the following night. Right. I, I think this is more in, in summertime when, when he's looking at. Right. Yes, it is. But And again, we clean those parking lots. I'm sure our crew goes down there. They do it regularly, and, and if, if people are leaving cars there for more than 24 hours, uh, like we've had a problem with the, the upper end of High Street parking mm -hmm. lot here, where vehicles are left there for a long period of time, we're unable to get in there and clean them, and that, that makes it difficult. Um, yeah, there are restrictions. There's no question about that. And, right. and we, when we have to get in there and we can't, we, we do get a hold of the owners. We have the police department track down their license numbers and we look up their addresses and, and, and contact them to remove them. And that goes the same for other parking lots. We try not to issue tickets except in the summertime right. when parking is at a real premium. So, so. I would think that, that before we make any decision, we should look at what's going on now, what the policy is and stuff, and take a good, strong look at it before making a rash Absolutely. decision on what we're doing. Absolutely. We'll get you a copy of the I regulations. Yeah. I think that we can bring lots. that up at another meeting. Yeah. So we'll take a look at it as best we can tell you. And uh, I'll be grateful for that. Okay. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for the town manager? Seeing none, old business. Approval of and signing of lease at 10 Ancient Highway. May I, Mr. What Chairman? Mean? Yes, uh, there has been a, uh, a lease uh, prepared by uh, the uh, Casasa Law Office, uh, letter dated to um, Christina Osterman, 9 September. This had previously come to our attention uh, uh, through uh, Attorney Casasa, the petitioners and the applicant, the carries for 10 Ancient Highway. And uh, there was, in fact, a, uh, a meeting of the minds in terms of a long-term lease that extended past uh, any encumbrance that uh, has now uh, been developed uh, by uh, compliance with statute. Uh, there's been no communication to me, and I don't think to the board, on this uh, narrowing of our intent in the meeting of the minds. Uh, this was, uh, uh, again, before us. Uh, Attorney Gerald is on the uh, uh, vacation, and uh, a much deserved vacation. I would uh, uh, motion to approve the lease with a modification or an amendment 
I did speak with Attorney Casasa this afternoon regarding this, and this was his intent. And he was here for the meeting and expressed his, uh, um, his uh, regrets for not being here tonight, but he's performing his moderator duties for this week. Uh, uh, in terms of the Hampton lease, paragraph four, I would offer uh, the amendment uh, that uh, it would state, the term of this lease shall be five years beginning 12 September 2016, comma, continuously and perennially and without interruption, renewable by the lessee, their successors and or assigns in accordance with current applicable New Hampshire state law for a period of 99 years. I'll second that. Any discussion? No discussion. We have a motion of second to amend it, the terms of the lease to what was stated by Selectman Bean. All those in favor? Unanimous. Very good. So we can change the forms accordingly and uh, get them signed and we'll have it. We'll have it so it's up in the office so that we yep. can sign it. Right. Over the week. Yep. So we can get that done. Thank you. Old business. <clears throat> what is what is it about what's going on about this letter, the woman complaining about the noise at Bernie's? I received that today uh, and I forwarded it to the chief of police. I've not had an opportunity to speak to him yet, but uh, I'm assured that he will make do inquiry. Uh, and I'm sure they're going to go down and, uh, to her particular property and, and test the, the, uh, the noise levels. Because there's been other properties that have complained, too, so you might ask them about those. Okay. We haven't received any other complaints. This is the well, first one. Well, you told me to have them call the police department. Oh, absolutely. And that's what I've been yeah. doing. Yeah. If there's no action with the police department, for whatever reason it might be, please let the selectman's office know so we can tell the board what's going on. I think that's important so we all know what's occurring. Any of the old business? Uh, I, I do have uh, a couple of uh, items very quickly, uh, Mr. Chairman. One is the uh, uh, Town of Hampton versus Morgan Stern, the notice of decision yep. uh, on, uh, on that uh, attachment stipulation, paragraph four. In entering into the stipulation and waiving the September 2, 2016 hearing, the defendant, and then it says nothing in terms of uh, um, uh, gives up or upholds or retains, it's, it's, it's silent. It's just the defendant, the right to file an objection, request a hearing on the attachment, and seek any other relief there too. So it's silent on that, it's incomplete, and uh, it's ambiguous, and uh, it's come before us, it's a notice of decision. It doesn't say whether that um, defendant has a right to appeal that, it doesn't say anything. It's uh, an error that wouldn't pass um, a high school business course, and I wanted to bring it to the attention of the board. I read it too, and it's, it's so that's exactly what the court did. I have, I read it and I shook my head and went, what? Um, uh, perhaps counsel uh, post-vacation can uh, address yeah. that and inform the board, because uh, it is a, a substantial amount of money uh, uh, an appeal or Just not is important, and parties have uh, have signed off on it. Um, I would ask that uh, we schedule a uh, a brief informational hearing on um, the ADU issue, um, which has been before the planning board, um, and you heard that it's an important issue. We heard tonight about the uh, assessing. Uh, it's a property owner right. It's an expansion of rights under state law. I think it's a good thing, especially with affordable housing um, needs in this community, and I think it needs to come before the Board of Selectmen uh, additionally, and if we can schedule a brief by uh, the town planner and the town attorney in the next coming weeks, uh, their schedules permitting, I think that's great as we get into the Warren article season. That's a good idea, so if we could have him come in the uh, next week or the week after. I have some of it, sir. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, additionally, you the uh, planning board chairman to come in also, since they've been discussing it, that would be a good idea. That would be the mm -hmm. normal Force thing Jim's to do. The liaison, yep. yeah. whatever Jim wants to do. Uh, and finally, um, under old business, and it's kind of new business, but it's old business, is uh, there's litigation um, that has been adjudicated at the uh, um, Concord level, the city of Dover, cap on education. Um, we've all got that. That has serious ramifications. Uh, I would uh, like to get a, uh, a presentation. And so our folks in this town that subsidize to the tune of millions and millions of dollars a year, other people's 
children's education, some in very wealthy communities, uh, we uh, are aware of that future threat. Uh, it's removing a, uh, a cap, uh, and uh, I think it uh, potentially um, uh, exposes us to additional taxation, uh, according to my initial perusal. So I'd, I would like that addressed uh, as well. Okay. Thank would you, that, Mr. Chairman. Would that be through the superintendent's office? Would they? I would think he's looking for counsel to address it as a statutory okay. or legal, okay. legal item. Yes, sir. Very good. Thank All you right. very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anything else? Old business? This is just something I was going to suggest. Um, after talking to um, some of the firefighters, or one of the firefighters particularly, uh, and it was brought, and I asked some questions about um, what's going to, you know, now that they're making a trauma center in Seabrook, that's going to create lots of opportunities for the town to be bringing people over there. Mm -hmm. um, at least it seems that way. Um, but more importantly, part of our discussion was about how uh, uh, there's a lot of because the firefighters are only more than happy to do everything they can to help people uh, with the ambulance service and things like that. But I think there's a lot of people out there that don't really know exactly when they should call the ambulance. You know, uh, some people would be better to go to uh, these walk-up centers or these, like this new trauma center that's coming out. Um, and then there's probably other people that, are, that don't call when probably they should. So I thought maybe at some point we could have a discussion and have different people uh, from the other departments, maybe the police and the fire, that we could uh, have a discussion and what, you know, when people should call and uh, sure. you know, just open the discussion so that people understand yeah. and that people also understand that, that we now have all these new um, uh, everyone that I know that's gone to these different little centers, whether it's the one in Stratum, I'm hoping the one that's going to be in Seabrook will be more comprehensive. Um, they like it better than going to the hospital for many oh, yeah. things. Well, it's I've, so much easier. I think, to your point, I think uh, that we, we talked with the cable committee about mm -hmm. hiring somebody part-time to do some of the stuff and do some programming. Well, this what might be a good. What a better way to have a program oh, than, than then have do a, a thing up on it of the services you get, you know when to call, where to call, who to call, type yeah. of thing. There might be something that if we can, once we get somebody in that position, to do and and that would be great for Channel Twenty Two. And it would be good for everybody. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think you're right. I think that's an excellent decision. So, we just when we were having our discussion, that got brought up, and I said maybe we should do something like this. And mm -hmm. So noted, sir. Thank you. All righty, the next is on the new business. Sale of a 1988 E1 Cyclone pumper and the wave of the bid policy. We had one bid, Mr. Chairman, uh, from Louise Bridal. Who? Louise Bridal. <laughs> for $301. Is this for a party truck? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't I be on a pumper, I'll tell you that. <laughs> maybe, maybe an old uh, ambulance, but certainly but it, not on a pumper. But it was put out to bid. It was. Matter of fact, we had we've had two other vehicles that went with that, and I haven't awarded them yet. But we have multiple bids on those. This okay. is the only bid on this one, which has forced me to have um, bring pumper. it to the board for for your review, and and approval, and. Um, I'd like to get rid of this thing. I got to tell you, <laughs> it's, so, it's our it's our resident uh, albatross. We need a motion. So moves. Second. All those in favor? Four and one abstention. <laughs> <laughs> so, you want to do those other other vehicles? I, I don't need to. They're multiple bids, so I could just award them, and they're and they're they're able to do it on the purchasing policy. But I wanted to see what you were doing here with this one. Very you good. You need to do it those. Closing comments? On the new business, we yep. should get a schedule for tomorrow? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Good point. Good yep. point. We do have the elections tomorrow, and I know Mr. Bean's got into another election, so he could step <laughs> yeah. out of not well, having to He keeps to getting be, on the ballot, he so he does this have all to, the uh, time. So he's going to get elected because he's, <laughs> there's only four, four four positions, and he's in one of the four positions. Be able to be there. You're not going to be able to be there. I can be at the next election extra time. Okay. That's, that's, why, and that's why we discuss it at this point in time. And I know, Jim, you... I can go, like, 10 o'clock till 
one, two. Okay. Or, or and three I can, even. I can do the early one, sorry. You can do the eight. From se seven. Is it seven to ten? Seven. And I seven. can be there okay. at night. Seven to ten. You can be there for the count, yes, because we're going to need. And so you can be there till seven to ten. You can be there from ten to three. Okay, and I'll I'll close fill in that rest of that part. And, Okay. And uh, be there part of the other time when you're there because we should have two at the I think it's And says be, we'll between the three of you, decide which one doesn't want to be there at night cause, and I can be there at night. Well, we, use, we need at least three to sign, so we'll figure it out. But I think that's good. At least we talk about it. And that's a good point. Remind everybody tomorrow is voting day. It is going it's to at, be the Marston School. Um, in school. Marston Way, and school is in session. So, so be just careful. be careful when you're parking down there. Um, from 8 to 8. No. Seven to seven to eight. eight. I'm sorry. Seven seven in the morning till eight at the evening at the Marston School will be voting. And I'm having a medical um, procedure on Monday. I won't be here next Monday night. Oh. Okay. Well, good luck. Good Chairman, luck. we we do have a re, we do have a need for a public session after. So we have a need. Uh, okay. So are there any closing comments? Motion to adjourn to 2026. Or do we go in non-public? Well, motion to go in non-public and adjourn afterwards. Yes, sir. Uh, under 91A. 91A colon 3, section C and D. All those in favor? Roll call, isn't it? Yes, yes, roll call. Aye. Well, aye. If everybody aye. has their aye. hands up, it's aye. all aye. 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 That's so, roll yeah. call. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah.